Hi everybody, I'm Jordan Rolfes from Beagle Rampant Productions, and I know I made some promises at the end of my wintertime levels in gaming video. I promised all sorts of great things and lots of wonderful new content for 2017 and for the future of the channel, and I talked about splitting up the channels to make the content a little more accessible, and as you may have noticed, this is actually my first video in 2017, so... Yeah, I've been dealing with quite a few personal issues, a lot of scary, not good personal issues, but thank you God, the personal issues seem to mostly have been resolved, so I'm back and ready to do some good content here. You'll also notice um, the walls are a little bit barren here, I'm moving the studio space, so... That's taking a lot longer than I thought. I'm going to move all my gaming stuff into where I do my travel videos, so that should be interesting, I hope. I hope I can make that look good, and yeah, I just was dealing with a lot of personal stuff at the beginning of the year, but I seem to be in a good place right now, but I may be a little bit frazzled, so if I'm stumbling and stammering during this video, I do beg your pardon, but on to good things here. When I was doing my spring cleaning, cleaning out the studio and moving all my stuff, I found these little trinkets here. These are actually for an unreleased demo for the CDI. This demo was actually going to be a Metroid game. They were going to call it Metroid Rising. It was from a local design company, Emerson Creek Design, and when I bought Super Metroid, they gave me this form. It had a little thing you detach and fill out and send to the Emerson Creek Design Company to go ahead and get a demo for the Compact Disc Interactive System. And I didn't actually have a CDI back then, so I kind of forgot I had all this crazy stuff. So now I do have a CDI, and now that I found it in all of my rearranging and cleaning up here, I wonder. Is this good? Is it going to stand the test of time? Or is this going to be a monstrosity like Hotel Mario or Wand of Gamelon? Great! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! Well, it's the CDI, so let's not put our money on quality here. And since I actually did play it, I know oh, this ain't good. This ain't good at all. So sit back, relax, and watch this really weird bit of gaming history that we should all be very, very happy that never happened. So we'll start taking a look at Metroid Rising for the CDI, or what could have been Metroid Rising for the CDI, by reading this advertisement that I got when I purchased Super Metroid. As I mentioned, you detach the bottom part, send it in to the local Emerson Creek Design Company, and then they went ahead and sent you a demo. Well, actually, the situation was a little bit different, and I'll get to that in a little bit later, but... Basically, this advertisement reads, If Super Metroid wasn't intense enough for you, then we dare you to try Metroid Rising for the Philips CDI. Metroid Rising features full motion video, power packed with the acting talents of Alexandra Cordova and Roland McGob, a Hollywood blockbuster in your living room. So, a few interesting things right here. Alexandra Cordova was a local actress who starred in things that weren't necessarily gentlemanly, and I can't really show you a photo of Alexandra Cordova because none of the ones were really gentlemanly, and as the perfect romantic gentleman here, I really can't do anything untowards or anything like that on this channel, but a bizarre occurrence happened when she was found dead in a dumpster behind a used bookstore. It's... It's so appalling and horrifying that, one, murder, murder is never a good thing, and I couldn't really find any sort of actual reason or motive, just that this event did happen, and if you are going to be monstrous enough to murder someone, why on earth would you put the victim's body in a dumpster? 
they check those. They check them every week, sometimes every day, so that's really not going to do you any sort of good. I mean, the cops are going to find out, so you're not exactly Moriarty here. And, of course, Roland McGobb, he plays Colonel Duncan in the live-action parts of this game demo thing here, and he was a local public access star in the Dayton, Ohio area. I bought this in Cincinnati, of course, I say it in almost every video, but I'm from the Cincinnati area. So we're dealing with a local company and everything kind of in the Cincinnati, Dayton, Indiana, Northern Kentucky area here, and even then, a lot of people in this area probably never heard of Emerson Creek Design or Alexander. Alexandra Cordova or Roland McGobb, but interesting thing about Roland McGobb, when he was signed on to do this, he was pretty handsome. He had a really nice build and his body was kind of top notch. He had sort of a bodybuilder figure going on. And then when filming actually started, he had gained about 150 pounds, so the directors and producers had to film all of his uh, scenes almost in the dark, and he had to wear really dark clothes so that people really wouldn't grasp that this muscle man actually turned into... Metroid Rising takes you on a first-person adventure through some of the darkest worlds of the Galactic Federation, ones that even the toughest Marines cower before. Think you're slick enough to survive Metroid Rising? Then fill out this enclosed card to receive a free demo. But be warned, you will never be the same once you experience the fast-paced action of Metroid Rising. So, we have uh, some other interesting things to look at. This is a first-person shooter, which predates the Metroid Prime games by about three years. This came right at the very end of the CDI's life cycle. I remember I bought Super Metroid in 1998. I was a little bit slow on the bandwagon, like starting a YouTube channel in 2013, you know? When I was in high school and learning film production techniques back when YouTube first started. Huh. Isn't it weird what time can do to a person? But anyway... I sent all that stuff in, and I kind of forgot about it because, you know, I didn't have a CDI, but I love Metroid. Metroid's kind of my big thing, so any sort of Metroid memorabilia or collectible, I'm going to bark at. So I actually get this letter on the 2nd of April, 2005, when I had already forgotten about it, and again, by that point, I still don't have a CDI. I don't get my CDI until 2014. I didn't even know they existed until a few years before that, so yeah, by 2005, I'm like, I still don't actually know what a CDI machine is, but here's the letter from Emerson Creek Designs. And it's dated April 2nd, 2005. Dear Mr. Rolfus, thank you for your kind support of our company. We appreciate your business and interest in the fine products we have developed throughout the years. Unfortunately, our company has been sold and we will be unable to complete any pending requests that you may have had with us. According to our records, you signed up for one compact disc interactive demo, Metroid Rising. As a token of our appreciation for your business, we will still ship the requested material to you. Please be aware that, according to our staff reports, the project is less than 40% complete, and you may experience undesirable performance. Our company and our future parent company are not liable for any damages that may occur while using this product. We truly thank you for all your kind patronage over the years. Our valued clients moved every aspect of Emerson Creek Designs. We look forward to doing business with you again under our new parent company. Yours very truly, Jack Zessinger. So, they enclosed this little demo here, the Metroid Rising Un completed less than 40% complete demo for the Philips Compact Disc Interactive, and I know I just dropped it, but let's be fair, dropping it is the most kind thing I can do to this monstrosity, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up the disc and get that puppy fired up for us. The game starts with a title screen, and the title screen looks well, pretty average, considering what it is. And I should warn you guys right now that there is less than five minutes of actual playable content on this demo disc, but 
Overall, from what we can see here at the title screen, everything seems to be relatively normal. But when you click New Game, the first cutscene is actually a placeholder, and I'm willing to actually overlook this because the lead actress met an untimely and tragic death before shooting on this project began, so yeah, you don't have a Samus, you kind of have to put a placeholder in until you can cast someone and try to convince them that the role for this particular project isn't cursed, because let's be real, I would be thinking that, yeah, I wouldn't want to sign on to a project where the previous talent died in a horrible and gruesome manner. After the placeholder, we go into an intro movie featuring a colonel for the Galactic Federation, Colonel Duncan. Aye, Samus. I know you're onto the spot of the old R&R, &R, but I'm gonna have to cut your vacation a little bit short. The space pirates are attacking us on the planet Epsilon 9, and we really need your help. I'll send you the warp coordinates out to you right now. Right after this opening cinematic with Colonel Duncan, we're just tossed into the gameplay here. Moving is just an absolute nightmare. I have to really slam the control stick to get her to go really, really crazy. I feel like I have no actual control. When I tap the control stick, she doesn't do anything, but when I slam it, she goes all over the place. There's no middle ground with actually moving Samus you have to press 2 to get her to jump. There is no discernible way to do combat right at this point. I'll get to the combat a little bit later. And there doesn't seem to be any real way you could do Morph Ball from what I'm seeing at this opening level here. Maybe there was something a little bit on the words, but I don't think they were ever planning on implementing Morph Ball in a Metroid game, which is absolutely disgraceful. The graphics on this game are an uncompressed, uneven mess. I don't know what they're going to look like in the final video once I get everything exported, but what I was dealing with was a very uneven and bumpy frame rate with a lot of textures that really just seemed like they were default preloads for any 3D modeling program. I don't know if the company planned on replacing any of that stuff. I mean... Less than 40% complete. I mean, I don't know how we can actually interpret that so much, but I heard uh, Mario's Wacky Worlds, the intended uh, sequel to Super Mario World for the CDI, was about two-thirds complete, and that weren't no two-thirds complete. That weren't two-thirds complete at all. So I have to doubt, was this even 40% complete? The real monstrosity with this game is the appalling combat system. The combat is actually a FMV sequence, which is kind of forgivable at this era. Games like Burn Cycle had a combat sequence that was full motion video, and you move a target around, press the fire button, and you defeat the bad guy. So, okay, I can give Metroid Rising a pass here, but what I can't give a pass is the fact that I don't know how many hits Samus takes. I've seen her take five, I've seen her take three, I've seen her take two. I have no idea what I'm actually doing with the combat. So the jump button doesn't work, so really you just have the one button doing the firing now. It's just absolutely crazy, and there's no real way to predict how many hits the enemies take. I've seen them take five. I saw on one playthrough that they took almost as many as ten, and one time they actually just took one. So there's really no way to actually develop any sort of strategy. One good thing is that when you lose, you get a little thing from Colonel Duncan here. Aye, Samus. It looks like they gave you the old gilly gun gat go. What do you say? You want to go and give it another shot? And then the game asks if you want to continue from the last battle, if you want to continue from the start of the level, or if you want to go back to the main title screen. After we beat the first level, we see another video from Colonel Duncan here. Aye, Samus. They're already here at the base. We got to get you to hurry up there and drive them off. And it's by this point I realized that this game was going to be a linear mess of go here, do this, have Colonel Duncan yell at you in that weird accent. He's from Dayton, but 
he's trying to do like a Scottish, British accent. I have no idea what he's trying to go for, but I know what he actually achieves, and that's full-on offensive, but... So in the second level, for an area that is supposedly under space pirate attack, things seem pretty chill. But when I go ahead and walk around trying to get to the pirates and get some action here, the game just goes ahead and gives me this error message here. I tried to go around it a whole bunch of times, but it always crashed right at this particular point. So this rare unreleased Metroid demo CD for the Philips CDI is less than five minutes of playable content. So I'm sorry, but that's what it was. I can see why they didn't finish it. And I mean, why would they finish it? it Everything we have seen thus far was pretty much an unmitigated catastrophe, except for the music. The music was decent, passable, fair, I guess, but certainly not the level of Kenji Yamamoto. Definitely, definitely not Kenji Yamamoto quality, but digestible. But everything else about Metroid Rising was just not good, and I understand, it's less than 40% complete, and the company was going through a lot of craziness that was mostly local, they were only hiring local, they didn't really have a lot of international expertise going into this project, I get that, but at the same time, we know the CDI, let's be real. Something that's about 40% complete to any other company would probably be about 100% complete for a CDI product. A lot of things are released on the CDI that are just simply not ready. So, yeah, I don't know how much faith I could have actually have had in this Metroid Rising demo for the Philips CDI, but... Overall, though, I went ahead and put this disc inside my computer, and I was actually able to uncover some of the missing video files. And this might explain why the game kept crashing, because normally when you put a CDI disc in a PC or a computer to look at some of the files, you won't be able to do anything. You'll get a message saying, like, do you want to burn your disc or whatever, but I didn't get that here. I actually got a whole bunch of video files that I could scroll through and look at, so I was able to pick up a few of the gems here, so... Let's take a look at some other fine offerings that old Colonel Duncan has for us. I hear some it looks like those rotten sea spiders that are making the new Metroids. It's always constantly in there, always going about and making those Metroids. You got to go and show them what's for their Thomas. Don't you criticize me for being in character. I'll stay in character as long as I want, you know. Maybe if you crew would go ahead and actually buy yourself an actual honest-to-God editing machine, we wouldn't have to worry about these problems, okay? I'll go ahead and do what I feel like I need to do so I can go ahead and get this nonsense over the with, okay? You know, you just go ahead, invest in an editor. I don't care if you can't go ahead and do your little pre-editing or whatever it was you're telling me about, okay? I will go and do this project. Is uh, it the project? This the way I see it, okay? <clears throat> All right, Samus. Over there, I heard rumors that there's a really neat plasma beam fairy. Wow, Samus, you did it. The new species of Metroids have been destroyed and you drove off the space pirates from this system. We owe you a heartfelt thanks. Your poppy will be real proud of you. And I thank you, and the Galactic Federation, and the universe thanks you. Okay, so what am I getting paid for this nonsense? Your previously three checks, they all bounced on me, you know? Uh, so, what, am I gonna get an actual thing here? 
So let me know down in the comments section below what you guys thought of this, if you had any memories, or even just some memories of Super Metroid or your favorite Metroid games. Again, I want to give a shout out to anyone who is liking or following me on the Amino app, and if you don't know what Amino is, it's this wonderful app that I can only get to work on my smartphone, and I'm sure that you can get it to work on other devices, but for me it works best on my smartphone, and it is the best of all of the world's fandoms coming together to talk about really interesting things. I have never had a bad experience with anybody on Amino. Everyone on Amino is so great, and of course, all my fans here on YouTube, everyone who likes and comments and subscribes, they're all amazing as well. I have the best fans of any YouTuber on the planet. I don't know if I can really call myself a YouTuber necessarily, but I know the people who support me are the best fans anyone could ever hope to have, and I hope some of you guys actually go around calling yourself Jordan Rolfus and Beagle Rampant Production fans. I would really, really love that, but so far the internet, I haven't broken the internet yet, but I know one thing, I have the best fans out of anyone who's making videos online, so I really appreciate all of the support and all of the encouragement you guys give me, and I apologize that I have been going through some things and I'm doing all this studio renovation and that my set looks even worse than it usually does, so I thank you for your patience and kindness and understanding with me throughout this whole process. I'm Jordan Rolfus, and I do promise to do more videos and to see you guys coming up in the next couple of months. Thank you so much for all of your support, and I guess, yeah, I don't have anything witty to conclude this video with. Huh. Love you guys!